Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we're going to take a look at the 2022 Honda Ridgeline. This is the RTLE trim level and as you can see by what is here on the rear of the bed, this is the HPD package on this truck. That stands for Honda Performance Development and it adds quite a few features to the truck and there's also some dealer added options as well and we'll talk about what all of that is as we work our way through the video but let's talk about what you can find here with this particular model because of the HPD package and taking a look here at the front end we'll get our first glimpse at what you will find with the HPD package it's going to be this front grille it really looks a little bit wider because it's got larger openings in it than what you would normally have. Just kind of a more broad look to the overall front end of the truck because of what you see here. And of course, that's going to be accented even more by the fact that the front end of the truck has been changed since 2021. That more squared off kind of boxy look, obviously, from 2021 forward to make it look more truck-like. You will also find the 18-inch wheels, and something that is different here compared to other HPD models that I've seen in the past, you'll see that HPD logo there on the center cap right here, but normally these are gold. Tell me what your personal preference is. Do you like the black wheels over the gold, or maybe the gold over the black? It just depends. And if you're wondering, what about tire size? These Firestone tires are 245.60s surrounding those 18-inch wheels. And then something else I probably don't have to tell you about, the fender flares. And then as we work our way back, we're going to find HPD stickers here on the rear of the bed. We really already looked at that earlier, but you can see that Honda Performance Development right here in gold. And the thing about this is that you can get this package with any model or any trim level of the Ridgeline and then you're going to have the badging as well that's obviously going to look nice back here going to have that kind of flowing checkered flag design right there and as far as the front end of the truck goes LED headlights LED fog lights let's see if I can get down here low enough to give you a good view of that kind of hard to do on these bright sunny days sometimes but that is what you have there. And Honda Sensing, Lane Keeping Assist, Road Departure Mitigation. You're going to have Blind Spot Monitoring, Adaptive Cruise Control. Great features, those safety driving aids that come with Honda Sensing. And even though it's kind of hard to see on this side, but I think we have a little bit better lighting over here. Turn Signal Indicator built in. Now, these are manually folding mirrors, but they are power adjustable and they are heated. Kind of seems strange to be talking about heated door mirrors, side door mirrors when it's nearly 100 degrees today is going to be the high. That's right, already here in Northwest Louisiana, we are already getting into those really high temperatures. And for those of you who are wondering, well, does it have remote start? Another common feature people want to know about. There you go, you can see it right there, remote start right here, and then obviously lock, unlock, and your panic button if you ever need to set that off, there that is. And what about this truck's motivation for getting from point A to point B? Let's pop the hood open and we'll talk about exactly what you can find there. One of the things I really like about these Ridgeline trucks is the consistency that you find here because you don't have multiple engines at this point. I know a lot of you are asking for a hybrid powertrain. We'll have to see what happens in the future with that. But you do, across the board, on all trim levels, have the 3.5 liter V6. It makes 280 horsepower and 262 foot-pounds of torque. It's mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission. And the other thing that brings that consistency is the fact that these trucks across the board on all trim levels also come with all-wheel drive. If you haven't looked at a Ridgeline in a couple of years, as of the 2021 model year, all-wheel drive became standard, front-wheel drive no longer available. And I do think that's a good thing. A truck with all-wheel drive just seems to fit better. Maybe we'll see rear-wheel drive one day. What do you think about that? Tell me about that down in the comments. And speaking of driving, what about MPGs? 18 miles per gallon city, 24 out on the highway, 21 combined. And according to Honda, for every 100 miles you drive this Ridgeline, you should use 4.8 gallons of gas. And there are a couple of additional dealer added options here that I want to tell you about. That's not anything to do with the HPD package, believe it or not. That comes with the truck, but is actually installed at the port when it comes from its origin, obviously here to the United States, here to the port where it arrives. 
according to what at least I've been told, that's how that works. So let's talk about dealer added options. I hope that the camera is picking up those great kind of sparkles, kind of a almost metal flake look. Some of you may not know what metal flake is. That's kind of an old school term, but that's kind of what we have here. But Honda, Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana, where I borrowed this model from, has added a couple of things. Number one, auto butler. What that is, is basically, it's not paint protection film, but what it actually does is something that is wiped on like a wax and it dries and adheres to the paint and it's supposed to provide up to five years of coverage and protection. Also, you probably already see it, the window tint. That is not factory tint. So what we have here is dealer installed tint. So the percentages, in case you wanted to know, 40% on the front windows, 25% on the rear, and 12% on the rear window itself. And if you're wondering, what do those numbers mean? That is the percentage, that 40%, for example, is the percentage of light that is allowed to come through the window with that tent on there. And moving on to one of my favorite features with this truck, which is supposed to tow between 3,500 and 5,000 pounds when properly equipped. So that's a good thing. You have the steel reinforced bed here, and I'm gonna open the tailgate Notice how it opens in the conventional manner. A lot of you already know what I'm going to talk about here, but it does open in the conventional manner, but that isn't all because you have a really neat feature here with the bed trunk, but to access that right here, you're gonna reach underneath, there is a release right there, and you open the tailgate this way. Why? Because of that bed trunk. And the good thing about the bed trunk, here's good news for you in case you're wondering, it is lockable. So you can do that and then you can open this bed trunk and there is a lot of capability and features here. It's really a great multitasker. There are actually partitions that you can put in that go with all of three of those notches right there and partition it out into four different areas. And the reason that can be helpful, tailgating or whatever you might be doing, if you want snacks in one area, drinks in another, different types of drinks, soft drinks, waters, whatever the choice beverage you wish to have, well, you can separate those things out. And when all that water or the ice melts down and turns to water, well, guess what? It's easy to get rid of. All you have to do is pull out that drain plug right there and you're good to go. And that's not all you can do right here. You could also put dirty equipment back here, boots or whatever, if you need to hose something off and get it clean and do that. And then obviously drain all of that out or just leave the drain plug out and let it drain as you work. And one other thing that is super important here, I'm gonna make a change real quick and show you, but if you need to gain access to the spare tire, this is how you do it. If you need to change the spare tire, well, obviously you can slide the tray out here and put it in place as I have done. Very simple, it's not that heavy, it's actually very easy to move. You've got all your tools to change the spare tire. If you ever needed to put gas in the gas tank, you'll put this in. If you're using a gas can to fill up for whatever reason, if you ran out of gas, you'll put that in there and that actually opens the baffles in the gas tank because it's a capitalist fuel fill. And so it has those baffles in there that allows those to be basically opened and you can fill up with gas, no problem. Now there is one side note that I want to give you here, something very important that at least I've noticed. These, I'm sure there's a proper term for this. It's probably not what I call it, but I call these wing nuts. What these do is these screw down into this area right here up there when the tray is in place inside of the bed floor, basically. If you ever take those off, be careful to only tighten them kind of down to about finger tight. Don't over tighten them because if you do, it's going to be a beast next time you want to take those off. And I'm going to close this for just a second and show you that we do have, obviously, we've got the lighting here, LED lighting in the rear area to help with whatever you may be doing at night. And then obviously, let's see if we can get that off of there. We'll just show you down inside there. You have the power outlet right here. There we go, it fell down on its own. I couldn't get it to work without it just doing it by itself, but you've got the power outlet right there and a little bit of sport storage space right here, tie downs, and this bed has the built-in audio as well. And before I forget, what about payload? 1,509 pounds up to 1,583. And a quick look into the back seat. Obviously, you have black interior here. You also have, you really saw the floor mats back there in the rear in the bed trunk that I showed earlier. 
the fold out armrest with cup holders built in and then something that I like here I'm only going to do one side just because obviously I can only get to one side but you can fold both sides of the 60 40 split rear seats up and increase your cargo space that much more so if you had something you didn't want to have in the bed you wanted to keep it inside for whatever reason keep it dry if it's raining whatever the case is and there's nobody riding back here well obviously that is going to help and these seats are pretty far back so keep that in mind this seat's way back it looks like i don't have a lot of leg room but i still have a little bit of leg room i'm not exactly uncomfortable i'm not cramped up not a big deal and then you're going to have the dual air conditioning vents right here. And then I'll tell you what, let's do this. I'm going to raise the seat back up to try and give myself a little bit better access here to show you the dual USB ports that are right here. Kind of hard to get there at that angle, but I think you can see those right there underneath the area where you'll find the dual air conditioning vents. Taking a look into the front seat via the passenger side door, you're going to have your upper and your lower door bins. Quite a bit of space there, a lot of potential for storage. There's actually two drink holders right here that you could use if you wanted to use that for drink holders, depending on what will fit, but that is there. And then we have the power passenger seat here, power driver and passenger seats, both very comfortable. You can see these are leather seats, comfortable for sure. And there is the sunroof. It is conventional style, but it is there just so you can see what's available. Power adjustable or power sunroof, I should say, because obviously you can open and close that as can you do with the rear window back there. That is a power sliding rear window. And tell me down in the comments section, would you like to see Honda add an option in the future when there's a redesign, a panoramic sunroof? And the glove box, there should be another name for these glove boxes, it seems, because, well, you never find gloves in here. At least I've never put gloves in my glove box before. Tell me what you've done. I don't know, maybe you have. And then the armrests right here, very nice, comfortable, very, very soft, soft touch materials. I don't know if you can see how far I can press my finger down into that. And then you're also going to have quite a bit of space. Let me pull that out of there. Here in the center console, also more connectivity down there, USB and a 12 volt. And you can also see more connectivity options with another 12 volt and another USB port right there. You're gonna have your drink holders right here. I'll put the bottle back in just so you can see what's there. And some of the controls here, heated seats here. We don't have ventilated, that's okay, but if you live in Canada, you do have ventilated seats. We need that down here in Northwest Louisiana because we're already getting into the high 90s here before mid-May. But a lot more to look at here within the confines of this truck. Let's step over to the driver's side and see what you'll find there. We already took a small glimpse, a quick glimpse in through the driver's side door. Maybe you paused the video and took a look at what all is here, but in case you didn't, well, pretty easy to figure out everything for you can lock the windows right here, door locks, power window controls right there, and seat memory. Now, one thing you won't see here, child safety locks. Why is that? Well, let me show you why that is. That's because they're located right here on the rear doors, on both sides here on the left and obviously over on the right also. So when they're in the up position, that means they are not active. Push it into the down position and it is active, just so you know. And if you hop into this back seat of your ridgeline when there's nobody around, make sure that at least one of these is in the up position because you don't want to have to climb through that pass-through or call someone on the cell phone or whatever you need to do to let them know that you need to get out, need some help getting out or climb through that pass-through and let yourself out. Here are the controls. I showed you what you have right there for your power side view mirrors, those heated power side view mirrors and safety features right here that you can turn off if you need to or back on. You want to drive in econ mode, there is that option right there, and there are multiple driving modes. And here you have multiple options for how you position the steering wheel. We're going to fire this truck up real quick. But if you want to adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel, well, there is how you do that. It is manual, but it is adjustable also. Taking a quick look onto the dashboard right there, and then there's that pesky turn signal lever that a lot of people have not quite mastered just yet, or maybe they just didn't spec that into their vehicle when they bought it. Not only a Ridgeline, but all vehicles on the road. I've seen some Ridgelines that don't have turn signal options built in. So, you know, you can always have that added if you want to. 
Yes, a little sarcasm will never hurt anybody. It's okay to laugh as we take a look at the steering wheel mounted controls. I probably don't have to say too much about what is there. And you might have noticed that you have the paddle shifters here on the steering wheel. If you're new to the Ridgeline, you might be saying, well, that's a little bit strange. Why would you have paddle shifters on the steering wheel in a Ridgeline truck? Well, as we look at the push button shifter right here, you're going to notice that you have multiple driving modes. You can go through your driving modes right here. I'm going to put the truck into drive. And here's what's going to happen. We're in drive right now. Let's see if we can give you a good view here of what happens. Now we're in econ mode. I push that button for econ mode. You can turn that back off. You also have drive and what some people call sequential mode or sport, but it is sport mode nonetheless. And here are your different driving modes. Normal, snow, mud, sand. You can see what all is there as far as that goes. Pretty simple to use, pretty easy to figure out, and I'll explain exactly how that works in just a little while when we do our test drive. And for those who might say, hey, Tom, does this one have built-in navigation? Well, I don't have to tell you. You already see it right there on the screen. Very easy to use, very effective. This whole infotainment system is so easy to use. Very much user-friendly. If you've never had this kind of technology before, I tell you what, this is a great place to start because it's so easy to use and to figure out. And then something that's interesting here, just a little side note about these ridge lines that I find interesting. For 2021, for that model year, Honda brought this knob back. A lot of you were requesting that. So apparently people like to be able to control the audio and turn their radio on and off with that knob. And then you are gonna have your multi-view rear camera. You can see that's a pretty clear image right there. I hope that this camera is doing it justice. My GoPro, we do have the sun kind of shining into that a little bit, but I'll give you a couple of looks at the three different views and let you see what's there. If you're gonna back up to a trailer, there you go. Or you could use that for a lot of different things, not only backing up to a trailer, but also if you just needed to see what was behind you and you're wondering how close you were to whatever it may be back there. You do have tri-zone climate control here, dual in the front, single in the rear. Obviously you can't control it from the rear, but you can control it from the front right here. But as you can see, you've got that. You can sync that if you want to, that way both sides change and are set to the same thing. And then you can turn rear on and off right here. I have it off because it is kind of noisy back there. And I didn't want that to interrupt your experience here in the video. Also, we did talk about it, but there is the wireless charging pad. You can see that my phone came on right there. It is now charging. And right up here, if you're wondering, how do you open that rear sliding window? You've got the buttons right here for that. If you want to do that, this one is actually for the sunroof. And this one is for that rear sliding window. Let's see if we can give you a good look at that. There we go. We'll open that up and give you a quick look at what that looks like. Now the only thing we really have left to do is to get out on the road and do a test drive and tell you what this truck is like to drive, what it's like to ride in. Let's go and do that now. All right, we're going to hop out onto the road here for our test drive. And one thing that I want to make sure I cover here the driving modes and only you know a couple that I can really talk about here because obviously we don't have sand or snow or mud to drive in or anything like that I don't think the dealership would like for me to get the truck dirty but it is what it is but here's the thing basically when you consider the different driving modes if you're wondering well what exactly do those do what's the difference between econ and say sport or what a lot of people call sequ sequential which is simply just sport mode if you're wondering what the differences are in those, basically it doesn't change how much horsepower the truck is putting to the ground. It changes how quickly that horsepower gets to the ground. And so when you're in econ mode, for example, if you floor the gas pedal, what you're going to find is that it takes longer for the RPM of the engine to climb than it will say in sport mode. So there you go, just kind of a simple way. It just kind of regulates basically how quickly the RPM of the engine goes up. And obviously that determines how quickly the truck gets down the road, how quickly it accelerates. And well, you can kind of figure it out from there. It's pretty easy to deal with. So let's talk about the overall driving experience here. I'll tell you what, having the independent rear suspension, this makes this truck very unique in the fact that it has 
well, a very non-traditional truck-like ride quality, such as that Ford F-150 that we're passing right there. This truck rides a lot better. It has a very smooth driving experience. The ride quality is anything but truck-like, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a lot of the truck capabilities and functionality that you might want. Obviously, being a mid-sized truck, I wouldn't compare it to something like that F-150 back there or any other full-size truck, the Ram 1500, the Chevrolet Silverado 1500s, and so forth, because, well, it obviously isn't in the same category as those are. But the truck is easy to drive. It's very maneuverable. That's another advantage to the way this truck is built is that it has a tighter turning radius than you would have with a lot of more traditional trucks out there. And even though it is specced for towing, you know, it's not going to tow a gooseneck or anything like that, but nobody's going to buy this truck for that purpose. But overall, a very comfortable truck. The ride quality is comfortable, but so is the seating. And you might sound, that might sound kind of strange, but believe it or not, there are vehicles out there on the road, well, where one basically cancels out the other. You have smooth uh, ride quality, but uncomfortable seating, or you have uncomfortable ride quality and comfortable seating. So it's kind of an interesting thing to deal with. Here you have a nice balance. The technology is easy to learn. I've said that already in the video, but it goes without saying that, well, it's important because there's still so many people out there on the road who still have vehicles that don't have this kind of technology, the infotainment system and all that kind of stuff. It's easy to use, easy to learn. Don't worry about it. You'll get used to it if you're maybe on the fence, so to speak, saying, man, I'm just not so sure I'm ready to buy that kind of technology yet. But there are vehicles out there where it's harder to learn than it is here. Comfortable steering wheel, the gas pedal is very responsive, and the brake pedal seems to be well balanced. Now, these are one of those, a couple of those things that I like to talk about where basically what it amounts to is you really need to drive the vehicles for yourself. And the reason I say that is because my feedback is really based more so on my daily driver, what I have the most experience in. So I might tell you that the brake pedal and the gas pedal act a certain way. You might hop in the vehicle and say differently. I might say the brake pedal's too aggressive. You might say, man, I think it's balanced perfectly. What are you talking about? It's too aggressive. So it just boils down to you needing to experience everything for yourself. But I try and give you the best feedback that I possibly can, and hopefully that's helpful. I'm always curious to see what you as the consumer think Honda should change when they redesign the Ridgeline. I'm sure we're gonna see that hopefully in the near future, not too far down the road, but what would you like to see Honda add or maybe change that isn't here or what's already here that you say, yeah, I'd like to see this changed or whatever the case may be. You never know who's reading your comments, so leave a comment, tell Honda what you like, what you wanna see change, all that kind of stuff. Maybe you think it's perfect as it sits. Tell me what you think. I'm always interested to read your feedback. Got to say a special thanks to my friends at Holmes Honda for loaning me this 2022 Ridgeline RTLE HPD. Yep, that is a mouthful for the day. And all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out another of the videos that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.